Hi everyone, my name is Jake, and today I'd like to share tool tips and tricks on inking your comic pages. This video will cover the brushes you could use, ways to make panels, speech bubbles, and the vector tools to achieve everything, all of which can be explored in Clip Studio Paint. Arguably, one of the most important parts of how you start your inking process is deciding the brush tools you'll use. Some brushes can help you achieve a look that is smooth and technical, some can help you achieve a more dynamic expression, and others are best fit for the finer details. My advice is that you should ultimately choose the brushes that you're most comfortable with. If you have none, take some time to practice with a variety before committing to the ones for your comic. For example, my favorite brush to use for a comic is a default called Real G Pen, which comes already with Clip Studio. Additionally, when you decide on a brush, take a moment to decide what you want to achieve in your inking style. For example, if you want something serious and moody, you could use plenty of high contrast and large quantities of black. If it's lighthearted and cheerful, you might make it more simplified. If you're looking to add tone or color, you might ink only enough to let the tone or color determine the mood once it's applied. The color of your inks can play a role too, but unless you intend to color your comic, your best bet is to stick with black. Ultimately, it's a good idea to decide what your goals are before you begin. Did you also know that Clip Studio Paint comes with a library of effect brushes? From cross-hatching and patterns to nature and lace, these brushes can make your life easier. They're not only brushes, but assets found in your material folder, like patterns and effect lines. You can achieve a lot of cool effects that you often see in all kinds of art, and utilizing them can add a lot to your comic. The tools are there at your disposal, so don't be afraid to use them. Next, I want to talk about panels. The panels help the way you want to sequence your story. Before you ink, you'll want to have mapped out your comic to give you a general idea how you want the panels composed on the page. When you're ready to lay panels, there's a handy panel tool that not only places borders where you want them, but they can also create new folders automatically. Anything you draw inside the layers in those folders will be self-contained in the panel. Need to change the size? It's got you covered. All you need is the operation tool, click directly on the panel border, and you can adjust to your heart's content. There's also more than one way to create frames. You can click and drag for easy rectangles, multiple clicks with a polyline tool, or you can completely freehand the borders. Did you know that there's also a tool that lets you divide frames? You can cut the panels you made with the panel tool any which way you want, and then it separates the split panels for you into different folders. You can freehand the direction, or for perfectly horizontal or vertical lines, hold the shift key as you place it. All these settings are adjustable, so if you haven't already, try experimenting with your options. Feeling avant-garde? Since it's a vector tool, you can change the line thickness and even the look of your frames with the brush shape drop-down menu. There's actually so many ways you can design your panels. The way you frame your story can really affect the mood of the moment, but your ultimate goal is to make it easy for your audience to read. Make sure you position your panels in a way that's easy to tell which direction they should go and easily distinguishable from one action to another. Aim for simple over overly complex. Finally, let's talk about speech bubbles. You can either draw them freehandedly or use pre-made assets and shapes, all of which are easily accessible from the balloon tab. Like with the panel tool, you can make easy adjustments with the balloon tool, whether it's the size, the shape, or location of the bubble on the page. Like the panel tool, you can change the brush shape, line thickness, and even the color of the outline and the fill. You can also use the same tool to create the tails for your balloons for an easy and or unique means of directing the direction of the speech. Balloons can even be stacked on top of each other if they're on the same layer and still be adjusted separately however you want. Want to explore more variety? There's a wide array of pre-made balloon assets in your material folder that you can drag and drop and adjust to your heart's content. Additionally, the nice part of the balloon tool is that you can type directly on them with the text tool. Then, no matter how you adjust the bubble, the text will always remain inside and perfectly centered. For both paneling and dialogue, a good rule of thumb is to make them look like they belong there. If you use a smooth brush when you ink your characters, try to keep the lines for your panels and balloons the same way. 
If you use a more textured brush, such as Real G-Pen like me, consider making the rest of your lines the same brush shape. Whether you use pre-made assets or freehand everything yourself, keeping this kind of consistency makes your comic feel more put together, professional, and impress both your audience and fellow creators alike. What's really wonderful about Clip Studio is that there's these tools available by default, and there's a large library of tools made by users for users, all available in the Clip Studio Asset Store. You can always find brushes, templates, and effects to experiment with the way you ink. Consider even looking at your favorite comic artist and mangaka and study their inking methods. Although I believe ultimately the tools don't make the artist, Clip Studio makes the comic creating process incredibly streamlined and user friendly for beginners and masters alike. I hope you found this video helpful and I wish you luck on your comic journey. Thank you for watching and until next time.